Hey, welcome back to the 3N plus 1 conjecture. In this episode, we're going to step back and do some philosophizing. So sit down in your plush armchair, pour a whiskey, light a cigarette, whatever you do when you're philosophizing. We got three topics, provability, decidability, and universality. First, what if the 3N plus 1 conjecture is true, but not provable? Kurt Gödel showed that there are some mathematical statements of that sort. So if the 3N plus 1 conjecture were like that, we'd have to add it as a new axiom of mathematics. I guess there's some mathematicians who do want to add the Riemann hypothesis as a new axiom, since so much useful stuff would follow from its truth, but that sounds kind of sketchy. It reminds me of my friend from college who specialized in making up new axioms while doing his math homework. He said we could have just added Fermat's last theorem as an axiom and just saved Andrew Weil's seven years of work. I like Fermat's last theorem basically says there's a square I can bust into two smaller squares, but is there a cube I can bust into two smaller cubes? Hmm, can't seem to do it with this one. We could go looking for a huge counterexample, um, some cube that could be broken down into two smaller cubes, but we'd never find it. Anyway, let's not add the 3n plus 1 conjecture to the list of mathematical axioms yet. Decidability is different, so here's a decision version of the 3n plus 1 problem. Is there a predictable time algorithm that takes a number n as input and outputs yes if n goes to 1, otherwise no? It's not fair to use the 3n plus 1 procedure itself as the algorithm because it definitely doesn't finish in a predictable amount of time. Alan Turing showed that some problems aren't solvable by any algorithm, and he wasn't just talking about romance. For example, can you write an algorithm that takes an input as input a file of C code and outputs whether that C code is going to terminate or not? No, nope, there's no algorithm for that. So how about the 3n plus 1 decision problem? Actually, nobody knows if it's decidable. But let's see if we can reason a little bit about it. So if the 3n plus 1 conjecture is true, then this is decidable because there's an algorithm that's just accept input n and print out yes. Likewise, if it's undecidable, then it's false. But what if the 3n plus 1 conjecture is false? Um, for example, there's a counterexample. Then there might be an algorithm that returns whether any n goes to 1. For example, an algorithm could check whether n is a member of some loop. In that case, output no, otherwise output yes. Or maybe there's no algorithm at all. OK, that's provability and decidability. Universality means the 3n plus 1 sequence machinery can be hijacked to do anything a universal computer can do. That seems crazy at first. For example, here's an algorithm to tell whether any m is prime. Take m, multiply it by 416 and add 104, then put that big number into the 3n plus 1 machine. Stop it after 27 steps and you get some number k. If the last digit of a k is 6, then say yes, m is prime. Otherwise, no, M is composite. Okay, I'm just kidding. That doesn't work. But it would be cool if we could hijack the 3N plus 1 machinery uh, to do not just that, but any uh, thing, any other algorithm. Actually, it might even be possible to do that. The 3N plus 1 machinery might have universal computation power. Nobody knows. The famous mathematician John Conway came up with a variant of the 3N plus 1 function that does have universal power. Instead of just two subfunctions, one if n is odd and one if n is even, he has k subfunctions. You pick the sum function based on the remainder of n divided by k. Uh, and then you just iterate it. And he proved that there's a huge function like this that can do anything a general purpose computer can do. Now, if the 3n plus 1 machinery were universal, then it would also have to be undecidable. Otherwise, we could use it to decide questions that are known to be undecidable. But even if the 3n plus 1 is not universal, it could be undecidable. That's because mathematicians and computer scientists say there's a no man's land currently between universal power and decidable power. OK, now there's one more philosophical point I want to talk about. Suppose everything's good, that the 3n plus 1 conjecture is true and provable. We just have to prove it. Can we say anything about how long the proof might be? The mathematical truths that we study in 8th grade have very short proofs. Otherwise, we wouldn't make 8th graders study them. 
But by the time you get to Fermat's last theorem and Alan Baker's proof about the separation of the powers of two and three, well, the proofs are quite long, dozens of pages, and no mathematician knows how to shorten them. So when an unsolved problem gets solved, sometimes the proof is long and people aren't even sure if it's right or not. Uh, and other times the proof's very short and everyone slaps their forehead and says, why didn't I think of that? So we're gonna assume the three n plus one problem is true and provable and hope that the shortest proof isn't a thousand pages long. But occasionally, late at night, we might do some more philosophizing. Okay, see you in the next episode.